building backend APIs has become even simpler with ASP.NET Core 6. But what about testing? This video teaches a simple way to create integration tests for ASP.NET Core 6 web API applications. Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. On this channel, you'll learn all about .NET development. In this video, we want to test the most simplistic API that you'll ever see. It's only seven lines of code and contains two routes. On the default route, the API returns hello world. And for the sum route, you can provide two arguments and the API will calculate and return their sum. If you want to learn more about the simple style to build web APIs in .NET 6 called Minimal APIs, check out the introduction to Minimal APIs video linked in the video description and popping up on the screen right now. Now let's add a test project to the solution. We open the Add a new project dialog and select the MS test test project template from the list. On the next page, we choose minimal API demo .test as the project name. On the last page, we select .NET 6 as the target framework for the test project and click on the create button. After a few seconds, Visual Studio created the test project for us and added it to the solution. Let's quickly rename the create the test clause to API tests. We don't want to develop the tests from scratch. Instead, we want to use already provided data types to make it as simple as possible to write an API test. Therefore, we open the NuGet package manager and install the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC.testing package. Next, we want to reference the project that implements the APIs from the test project to access the program class and run an instance of the web API project from within our tests. In the solution explorer, we right click on the dependencies folder of the test project and select the add a project reference menu item. In the dialog, we select the minimal API demo project that contains our APIs and leave the dialog using the OK button. We need to do one last thing before writing the first test. Since the program class is internal, we need to make the internal types visible to the test project. Starting with .NET 5, we can do that in the project file. Let's open the project file of the Web API project in Visual Studio. I insert a snippet that contains an internal Swissable 2 node within an item group tag. Using the include attribute and the assembly name variable, we declare that the internal types should be visible to our test project. We save the file and open the API tests.cs file in the test project. Let's rename the method to default route underline returns hello world string. We want to call the default route and test if the API returns the hello world string. Now let's start with the implementation of the test method. We create an instance of the web application factory type. It's a generic type and we provide the program class from the API project as its type argument. We add a using statement for the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC testing namespace to make it compile. The type comes from the NuGet package we installed when setting up the test project. It's important to understand that the web application factory will run the APIs in the test execution context. It means that you don't have to run the APIs to execute the tests. You can execute the tests and the web application factory type will start the server. Next, we create an HTTP client variable of type HTTP client using the create default client method of the web app factory variable. This call provides us with an HTTP client that we can use to send HTTP requests to the server running in the test execution. Next, use the getAsync method on the HTTP client type and provide an empty string to specify that we want to call the default route. The getAsync method, as the name intends, is an asynchronous method. We use the await keyword and change the return type of the test method to task and define it as async. Next, 
we access the response and use the read a string async method on the content property of the response object to retrieve the data returned from the API. As the last step, we use the assert.requals method to check the content of the string result variable against our expected hello world string. Now let's compile and run the test. As you can see from the green check mark, the test passes. It takes less than a second to run the test on my machine. It includes starting the web API application, creating an HTTP client, and running the test case. If you got any value out of this so far, this is the perfect time to let me know with a thumbs up so that YouTube can share this video with more.NET developers. Now let's add a second test method and name it sum underline return 16 for 10 and 6. We're going to test the second API listening on the slash sum route. Before we implement the second test, let's extract the test setup code into the constructor of the class so that we can reuse it for the second test case. We create a constructor and move the first two lines from the first test method. We also change the HTTP client from a local variable to a private field and use the field in the first test method. Now let's implement the second test case. First, we call the HTTP client and use the getAsync method again. This time, we provide the slash sum route with n1 equals 10 and n2 equals 6 as the request URI. Next, we read the content from the response as a string and parse it into an int variable. Last but not least, we write an assert statement that verifies that the result we get from the API call equals the expected result, which is 16 in this test case. Let's compile and execute both tests. As you can see, we see the green check mark again and both tests were completed as expected. You can learn more about integration testing ASP.NET Core 6 Web API applications in the documentation linked in the video description. If you want me to continue this journey and for example add service dependencies, use mocks or something else, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about .NET development, subscribe to this channel and watch this video next.